Nora. And I'm Rebecca. And today we're going to read to you the story of Barbar, the Little Elephant by Jean de Bruno. Before we begin, we just wanted to let you know that there is some violence and death portrayed in this book. We advise parents to listen before letting your kids listen in case it is too much for them. In the great forest, a little elephant is born. His name is Barbar. His mother loves him very much. She rocks him to sleep with her trunk while singing softly to him. Barbar has grown bigger. He now plays with the other little elephants. He is a very good little elephant. See him digging in the sand with his cell? Barbar is riding happily on his mother's back when a wicked hunter hidden behind some bushes shoots at them. The hunter has killed Barbar's mother. The monkey hides. The birds fly away. Barbar cries. The hunter runs up and cuts poor Barbar. Barbar runs away because he is afraid of the hunter. After several days, very tired indeed, he comes to a town. He hardly knows what to make of it because this is the first time he has seen so many houses. So many things are new to him. The broad streets, the automobiles, the and buses. However, he is especially interested in two gentlemen he notices on the streets. He says to himself, really, they are very well dressed. I would like to have some fine clothes too. I wonder how I can get them. Luckily, a very rich old lady who has been fond of little elephants understands right away that he is longing for a fine suit. As she likes to make people happy, she gives him her purse. Barbar says to her politely, Thank you, madam. Without wasting any time, Barbar goes into a big story. He enters the elevator. It is such fun to ride up and down in this funny box that he rides all the way up ten times and all the way down ten times. He did not want to stop, but the elevator boy finally said to him, This is not a toy, Mr. Elephant. You must get out and do your shopping. Look, here is the floor walker. Goodbye then buys himself a shirt with a collar and a tie, a suit of a becoming state of green, then a handsome derby hat, and also shoes with spats. Well satisfied with his purchase and feeling very elegant indeed, Barbar now goes to the photographer to get his picture taken. And here is his photograph. Barbar dots with his friend, the old lady. She thinks she looks very smart in his new clothes. After dinner, because he is tired, he goes to bed and falls asleep very quickly. Barbar now lives at the old lady's house. In the morning, he does setting up exercises with her, and then he takes his bath. He goes out for an automobile ride every day. Old lady has given him the car. She gives him whatever he wants. A learned professor gives him lessons. Barbar pays attention and does well in his work. He is a good pupil and makes rapid progress. In the evening after dinner, he tells the old lady's friends all about his life in the great forest. However, Barbar is not quite happy, for he misses playing in the great forest with his little cousins and his friends, the monkeys. He often stands at the window, thinking sadly of his childhood, and cries when he remembers his mother. Two years have passed. One day, during his walk, he sees two little elephants coming toward him. They have no clothes on. Why, he says in astonishment to the old lady, it's, it's Arthur and Celeste, my little cousins. Barbara kisses them affectionately and hurries off with them to buy some, them some fine clothes. He takes them to a pastry shop to eat some good cakes. Meanwhile, in the forest, all calling 
and hunting high and low for Arthur and Celeste and their mothers are worried. Fortunately, in flying over the town, an old marabou bird has seen them and comes back quickly to tell the news. Celeste, Arthur, Celeste, Arthur, Arthur, Celeste, Celeste. The mothers of Arthur and Celeste have come to the town to fetch them. They are very happy to have them back, but they scold them just the same because they ran away. Barbar makes up his mind to go back with Arthur and Celeste and their mothers to see the great forest again. The old lady helps him to pack his trunk. They're all ready to start. Barbar kisses the old lady goodbye. He would be quite happy to go if it were not for leaving her. He promises to come back some day. He will never forget her. They have gone. There is no room in the car for the mothers, so they run behind and lift up their trunks to avoid breathing the dust. The old lady is left alone sadly. Sadly, she wonders, when shall I see my little Barbara again? Alas, that very day, the king of the elephants had eaten a bad mushroom. It poisoned him, and he became ill, so ill that he died. This was a great calamity. After the funeral, the three oldest elephants were holding a meeting to choose a new king. Just then, they heard, hear a noise. They turn around. Guess what they see? Barbara, Barbara arriving in his car and all the elephants running and shouting. Here they are, here they are. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Celeste. What beautiful clothes. What a beautiful car. Then Cornelius, the oldest of all the elephants, spoke in his quavering voice. My good friends, we are seeking a king. Why not choose Barbar? He has just returned from the big city, and he has learned so much living among men. Let us crown him king. All the other elephants thought that Cornelius had spoken wisely and eagerly. They awaited Barbar's reply. I want to thank you one and all, said Barbar. But before accepting your proposal, I must explain to you that while we were traveling in the car, Celeste and I became engaged. If I become your queen, she will be your queen. Long live Queen Celeste. Long live King Barbar, cried all the elephants without a moment's hesitation. And thus it was that Barbar became king. You have good ideas, said Barbar to Cornelius. I will therefore make you a general. And when I get my crown, I will give you my hat. In a week, I shall marry Celeste. We will then have a splendid party in honor of our marriage and our coronation. Then, turning to the birds, Barbara asks them to go and invite all the animals to the festivities. And he tells the dromedary to go to the town and buy some beautiful wedding clothes. The wedding guests begin to arrive. The dromedary returns with the bridal costumes just in the nick of time for the ceremony. After the wedding and the coronation, everybody dances merely. The, the festivities are over. Night has fallen. The stars have risen in the sky. King Barbar and Queen Celeste are indeed very happy. Now the world is asleep. The guests have gone home happy, though tired from too much dancing. They will long remember this great celebration. And now King Barbar and Queen Celeste, both eager for further adventures, sit out on their honeymoon in a gorgeous yellow balloon. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the story of Barbar, the little elephant. Bye!